We have a theme, as I mentioned, we have some hopefully future champions, and we've got a two-time world champion and uh, Carabasset Valley uh, resident here, Seth Westcott. Seth, thank How you, you doing? for being here this no morning. Nice to see you. Good to see you. You know, I, I happen to notice that um, uh, that down at the Westcott estate that there's some construction going on. <laughs> Can you tell us about some of your projects, or are they secret? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, uh, we're, I'm making a garage, so... Um, <laughs> It's a pretty nice garage. It's though. a nice garage. Yeah. It's a yeah. uh, three bay with a. I'm taking the tuning out of the basement, and putting the tuning shop over oh, in so the. Uh, yeah. Got a little side, and then uh, one of the one of the projects uh, of myself and local sugar loafers currently is uh, kind of the revamp of winter stick snowboards, and so uh, actually I've got office space for myself up there. Um, Tom Fremont Smith and. Uh, Chris Lorenz and I, um, they're the, the two primary owners and have been since 1999. And we, we just, uh, like we announced the website relaunch yesterday and we've been, I, I, I was out, uh, out just outside of Telluride in Placerville at the factory this summer and we're actually headed back there Saturday to do some revisions to the boards. But, um, but yeah, I took over as head of design of Winter Stick Snowboards. That's pretty um, exciting. So it's, it's been a fun project so far, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know whether you are actually going to make prototypes there or what you are going to uh, do. Not there. We're, uh, Mr. Diller has been kind enough to, uh, we're, we're working through uh, trying to relocate the factory to the old uh, West Mountain. That's Western. what I was looking yep. for. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah, you know, there's never been a, uh, a ski factory or snowboard factory in I believe in the world with a chairlift going out the back door, so that'd be pretty <laughs> nice to be down there at the bottom of West Mountain. And then I'd have the punting green right outside the front if I'm, you know, having a blanking out on right. you know, summertime of not sure how I want to shape that board exactly, go out and work on my short game. And uh, <laughs> so it's kind of a win-win. And I believe you have even acquired some equipment for that, haven't you? Yes. Uh, Rumor has it. Yeah, my old friend Greg Johnson was making snowboards in Portland for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, when he closed down the the Team Eight factory in Portland, I, I picked up all that manufacturing equipment. So it's um, that's what we're going to be working with. That's an exciting project. It, it is. Yeah. I, it's really, it's been fun already. The last say three weeks, I've been testing all our first round of prototypes, and uh, the boards are really good. And it's uh, it, it's cool to be. I, I've been where ever since uh, eh, 2000 when I got picked up by Atomic, and and really when I was at Burton, I was doing some help in the R&D department, but really got into board design in the year 2000 with Atomic and creating their whole snowboard program. And uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a fun road to go down. And, uh, you know, Winter Stick is the oldest continuous running snowboard company in the world. It predates Burton by five years. And I so it's, it's pretty cool to take the reins of something like that that has such a heritage. And, uh, and really it's, its whole heritage uh, coming out of Salt Lake was in the back country, you know, mm -hmm. in the, Little Cottonwood Canyon um, area, and and Dmitry Milovich, the original founder, was a huge, um, you know, he was the first guy to be riding snowboards in the backcountry and in, in deep powder. And so for me, it's, yeah. you know, with the the trips I've been doing lately and the stuff that I want to do in the future, it goes hand in hand with where I want to be exploring different corners sure. of the world and trying to find deep snow. So it's so if that preceded Burton, did you actually uh, board on a, did you ride a winter stick? Um, I didn't, the first time I was ever on one was uh, 2006 at uh, the Galena Lodge in the interior of BC. Um, I went with uh, mm -hmm. Transworld Snowboarding Magazine to do their powder board test and that was the first time I got on one. And um, it was, it was a pretty, um, you know, it was one of those light bulb going off moments of, wow, like this, design that was, you know, still holding over from the 70s was completely functional and really sure. deep powder. And uh, it was it was a pretty amazing trip. And um, so to have it, you know, I, I've known Chris and Tom forever and they've, you know, been sugar loafers for a long time and mm -hmm. been believing in that brand and keeping that brand alive. And so to have it come full circle and to jump on board with them is it's really exciting. Fantastic, that's a fun project. Now, yeah. you've been busy, because I know that you're helping out with the coaching with uh, the new organization. Um, with the Riders Club. The Riders Club, Club yeah. and uh, boy, what a great idea that is. Absolutely. No, I mean, you know, the our ultimate vision with that is to bring it to public schools, you know. I mean, I my own personal story of growing up in Farmington um, prior to Titcom allowing us to snowboard, um, I, I was on the ski team and you know, there's 30 something schools in the state that have ski teams, um, but they're all Alpine based. And right. there's, um, there is no 
collective feeder system for freestyle skiing and for snowboarding. And so what we, you know, our ultimate goal um, this spring after getting through this winter is to go to the Maine Principals Association and any one of those schools that already has, you know, buses taking kids to a small ski area in Maine to do alpine skiing. Right. They should be allowing the same thing for snowboarding yeah, and for freestyle skiing. Yeah, they've been left exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. Skateboarding as well. Yeah. And these are things that um, the success is is booming. Yeah, and well, and you know, individual sports as a whole, you know, like they're all the lessons that kids can learn. I mean, the, the fact that we're not uh, not giving all the opportunities to kids in Maine that we could be, um, that needs to be addressed um, mm -hmm. from the from the school system standpoint and from the principals association. And so that's really our goal is to sway them to uh, to see the you know the viability of action sports and that you know now we're taking a look at this you know 20 years down the road I had my 20th high school anniversary this year <laughs> so we're taking a look at it 20 years down the road from yeah. you know when people like myself are in those school systems and uh you know whether it's skateboarding surfing or or snowboarding or freestyle skiing we have great opportunities for kids in the state of Maine and and they should be having the access to be able to do that stuff and you've tied in another uh, thing that you're passionate about. Winter kids is kind Absolutely. of tied into that as well. I think yeah. it's a perfect match, don't? No, it is. Um, yeah, I mean, when Barry first uh, approached me, Barry Tripp, about um, his idea behind this um, this group um, or this organization, it just made total sense to me that you, you know, it's as we, you know, ultimately with winter kids, you know, we're getting kids exposed to winter sports that wouldn't have been at a younger age, sure. and then if we can do something through the public schools where you know, we're giving opportunities to kids no matter what sport they want to try mm -hmm. um, and not just, you know, only creating an opportunity for alpine skiing, then, um, you know, it's, it's a perfect way to create a feeder system within our state. I, it's, it's hard to believe that that kind of some kind of support has not veered its head before, but yeah. uh, good for you guys to, to take that and uh, it's doing very well. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with Seth and talk to him. Scott is with us. Seth, thanks for being with us this morning. I, I know that uh, this year has been, uh, with the, the tragic um, loss of your dad, uh, it certainly must have affected your life in some ways, and uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. How, how has it affected your, your life, Seth? Um, well, I just, I think it... Uh, it presented an opportunity to take a pause and to assess what's really important in life. And that's, that's really kind of what I'm doing this year. I, uh, I went over to Austria last month with the team for a training camp and, um, you know, basically a day in, sat the coaches down and talked to them and was like, Hey, I'm gonna, you know, check out here for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, d coming off the injury last year and then, um, you know, clearly I've never experienced anything like this in life. And so, um, just kind of, Taking a breather for myself to finish healing physically, heal mentally, take sure. a year off from the tour. Um, this would have been 20 straight years on tour, so um, it was time to take a little break. Uh, I, I am going to go out and uh, race X Games, and then the, the the only thing I'm really looking forward to this winter. Well, there's two things. One of one of them's here, the uh, the fifth annual Sugarloaf Bank Slalom, but uh, this year is the 30th anniversary of Mount Baker, um, and it you know it's the oldest running race in snowboarding, and that's kind of um, th that's my main focus for this winter is to, to uh, win that. I I'd like to bring the gold duct tape back again. <laughs> I, I did it two years ago. I kind of, I got third last year, basically on one leg. And, uh, so that's, that's really um, pretty damn good. My focus, um, for this winter. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, other than that, I, uh, I, I'm going to spend some time in Japan riding powder. Um, we haven't determined where we're going for Warren Miller. We might be going to Turkey, uh, to a heli operation there that, uh, this cool village that uh, two of my Swiss friends went over there uh, in about '05 uh, with it's a Swiss helicopter company, and uh, they were walking through this village, and you know there's no ski area or anything, but these people through a translator came up to them and said, "Oh, it's cool." They saw their boards. They're like, "Yeah, we've been doing that a long time here," and, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, well, what's a long time? Ah, four or five hundred years." Wow. And. Uh, so it, there's a pretty cool story to tell <laughs> in a remote village in Turkey about probably the people who actually started snowboarding first and uh, the, the Josh Haskins, the producer at uh, Warren Miller. Um, I pitched him on it a few years ago and when I, we were out in Denver for the premiere this fall along with the Bean store opening in Denver and uh, he was like, 
this might be the year for the turkey story. So it's, there could it's be pretty some cool. really good riders out there. Yeah, well, it you know it's different. They're it's of course. they're basically riding toboggans, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, you know to be able to go shine a light on that that story would be a, a pretty cool Warren Miller project sure. this year. So. Well, all the people are watching, I'm sure they're saying, Greg, ask the question, ask the question. <laughs> Seth, will there be another run for the Olympics? Yeah, of course. That's, I mean, that's the whole plan. And that, that was really, um, you know, that was part of the plan in taking this year off. That It's the start of the four-year cycle. There's nothing to win or lose this year. Right. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, after, you know, sitting Sochi out um, last year, not being able to go defend my title, um, you know, being up at four in the morning to watch it online, um, instead of being there was a different experience over the two prior Olympics. And, uh, yeah, I, um, I plan on, you know, we've been, so we've been calling it, you know, it was like the, I forget what we were calling the trip to Sochi, but we've been calling it the slow boat to South Korea. Cause that's, <laughs> that's where we're going in <laughs> Pyeongchang in 2018. Wow. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm on the slow boat to South Korea and, uh, wow. looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, well, you know, uh, we were talking about uh, how your golf game is, and uh, uh, you know, yeah, you said you had a picture. I well, it's so funny, yeah, because we we happened to see, um, uh, you know, Steve Pierce out here in a tutu, and I thought, oh, well, yeah, was it a tutu photo? It was a tutu yes. photo, yes. and uh, Andy, maybe you could show that photo, and he could explain. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So you guys started this. Well, and, and if you see Carrie Audet and uh, Eric McClure are really showing their legs off. Eric's got picture. some nice legs yeah. there. Yeah, 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 I hate to say and that. Bob Perufo just doesn't look amused by it. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we were down in Natanis this fall. Um, uh, Eric's sister is actually involved in a uh, doing fundraising for a, a group of kids that has a, a dance troupe um, yeah. out of the Winslow area. So we were down in Natanis. And uh, if you wore the tutu, you got an extra tee shot. Well, why so, not? Yeah, we needed to eagle that hole. And <laughs> we ended up eagling it. So that was a uh, it was worth putting the tutu on. What a good sport. And thanks for allowing us <laughs> to show that picture, which I can't tell you where it came from. But uh, thank you so much. And uh, you can see uh, Steve down there doing his uh, to his Seth Westcott imitation down there today. <laughs> Seth, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate always it. Always a pleasure. And, and always a pleasure to see you as well. And best of luck with your projects here. And you're keeping busy. And nice to see you. And we'll see you out on the mountain. Right on. All right. We'll take a break. We'll